Oh boy. Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show. Jake Clark, John Schneider, and Eric Faldi. Uh, we have not done this for a while. With, yeah, with with both of you, yeah. it's been yeah. probably half a year. Because for a while it was... You and I. Yeah, you and I doing that. We did a, we did a few together, but maybe just a couple. Because the last one I did was when John was out, and uh, he was coming back from a train ride after Santa See, Clara. Oh, wow. That was October. Yeah. Last that October. Was October. That was last 10, that 10 months did. ago? No, not quite 10 months ago. October? Oh, geez, no, I guess it's August. It's yeah, August. it's November, August right now. December. Either way, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Ten we months. got ten months. Yeah, we've <laughs> that's what I said. Oh, ten I months. Didn't <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> I didn't hear you say ten. I just. Where did you learn to count? <laughs> we lost. We More lost. We lost, we, lost, <laughs> we lost our. We lost our set. So as you can see, we're in our work area. Yes. You might hear some ambient noise of. Uh, Printers at work. Uh, one of the Atchison's pounding away at uh, something, some, some printer stuff. or, <laughs> yeah, or a table. Yeah, we got our own foley artist over there, <laughs> unintentional foley artist. So we, it's not that we've lost the set. We still know where it's well, at. Yeah, we it, moved it. We have lost. Location. We have lost the ability to use it uh, in a convenient fashion. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I meant to it. say. I just wanted to make it we've, quick. We've rearranged. Um, we've condensed our space a little bit so that we can get a little bit closer to everything. Because before it was like, oh, I need to go over there. I need to go over there. I need to go over there. So now we've just kind of condensed everything um, into one one little area. Not yeah. really little. It's still pretty big. It's just but, it's more yeah. economic and so, efficient. Yeah. So the reason we've been gone is we've just been busy. We've been really busy with different new products, just getting um, the space reorganized, um, repair work. We've been doing a lot of a lot of different stuff for you guys out there in the repair side of things. Um, so it's just been it, it, and it's summer. So you know weekends yeah. we want to be at the lakes. We got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's kind of where we've been the last ten months, I guess. Well, that's where I've been. Right. And we're going to be changing up the format a little bit. Um, yes. Before, we'd be covering a lot of 3D printing news stories, but just due to the news cycle of some of those stories and us finding time to shoot the podcast and then getting the podcast edited and posted, that's another thing you're going to notice. We don't have that little bit of green screen in the back as part of the set that's anymore. Cool. So that's going to that's going to speed up quite, editing quite time a bit, quite yeah. a bit. Um, but a lot of the stuff had already been hashed over and rehashed, and we get it. If you like hearing our opinions, that's great, but we think it would be, we think it's gonna be more interesting to not just be talking about news stories yeah, that happen. We don't wanna beat a dead horse, and then if someone else talks about it, we don't wanna have to like reference what everybody else has already said. Like, yeah. oh, this guy said this, and I think this, you know. Just right. That's not to say if we, Yeah, if we have our opinion, we wanna just have our opinion and not. Yeah, and have that, listened to someone else's for a week already. That's not to say we won't be talking sure. about three D printing current events. We're just not going to attempt to do them in a timely manner, at, you know, as they're happening. Yeah, it might be a couple of weeks um, afterwards that we start talking about, it, or it might be a couple months that we reference it. It, it just kind of depends on where it kind of falls in the in the podcast cycle. Yeah. So um, the set we don't have the set anymore, but. Um, this is more of a workshop feel. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on behind us, but oh. we, we just cleaned. So <laughs> believe me, that will change. Still in the process of moving some things. So. Uh, we're also gonna go to more of a season format mm -hmm. where, we're, where we aren't releasing the videos the week that we're shooting them or even sometimes a few days after we shoot them, but we're gonna try and shoot more content ahead of time. That way we have more regular video releases so we're not going two, three months in between videos. But um, we will though. We will now with our season. Well, yeah, at the end of a season, but I mean, it's so. I think we're going go to just going to be. It's going to be more predictable for when the for when the podcast come out. Yeah, because I think each season is going to be till about March. That right when it starts picking up again, like like kind of how um, it happened this year. So we're actually in season two of the podcast because we. Yeah, kinda, I think the first <laughs> the first season was like uh, I don't know if we 60 got sixty some episodes. Did we get to sixty? I think I, I, I think really we hit sixty. I do I, not recall. Or we got close to sixty. Yeah. 50 or 60 something. I, I'm guessing the seasons are going to be a bit shorter. So that season, that one season was, that was, was, was about two years old. Yeah. So two years long. It's Pretty a very close. long season. Yeah. And, but, and we're going to continue to mess with, with how stuff is set up. So how we're set up for this one probably won't be exactly the same as the next one. It'll be pretty close. Um, but we might play around with lighting, play around with some stuff. We, we may go back. elsewhere. I know we talked about that at some point. Some community area in the city. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just or to, to change cool, it up. If we find cool people to interview, and if you want to get interviewed or have ideas or mm -hmm. somebody that you think would be interesting for us to talk to, we're gonna to try to figure out a Skype thing. I've been talking about this for a year. Still haven't really looked into it, but yeah, because we have about Skype two, or Google Hangouts. I think because we have about, Google Hangouts is just kind of low quality, but it would work well. It's easy to work into things. It's just the webcam thing is. A little sad so if you guys have an idea of something that we should use, 
that you know are, I, are I have really used well. I have used Ustream uh, producer or something, but that's yeah, it's 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 about it's 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 more fun like with video switching stuff, but the other stuff might right. just be easier to do. Yeah, we'll get something figured out because we do already have three companies on deck that we want to have on, or they've reached out to us and vice versa. So we're we're trying to get that stuff scheduled. Yeah. Um. So look forward to more of that type of content and more of a deep dive into stuff instead of just scratching the surface on some of these news stories. One thing that I'm sure we will continue to talk about in the future though is Kickstarter stuff. It just it keeps on coming up. We gotta we gotta do the the, the Tyco. Yeah the Tico the, the Tico three D two years after the fact. Yeah. So I'm, they're actually they're actually doing pretty well. I haven't checked in on I've them in a while. Of, I've heard a couple of people are well we're we're getting to real yeah, they, 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 I think yeah. they've they've done it. They had a wall of printers and they were actually printing this time, not just moving. So yeah. So I mean, we're still gonna go and touch back to touch back on that kind yep. of stuff. Uh, so Jake, what do you have up next? On so your next, um, so Faldi, you made this. Yes, I did. <laughs> so <laughs> let's uh, let's kind of talk a little bit about uh, about what. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So it's actually yeah, Eric. It's, you how about you handle? Yeah, you, you, well, it's it. You can't really. It's broken. It's not gonna unbreak. So. Uh, <laughs> So uh, not with that attitude, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a skateboarding enthusiast, I guess skateboarder, so I want to say, but uh, I don't know. I, a long time ago, I wanted to I wanted to make a skateboard, and then I was like, oh, it's just going to be too difficult. There's a guy named Fantasmino. We talked about him a long time ago. It's probably about a year ago. It was my one year at the at the Fargo 3D. Mm, you're uh, coming up on podcast. your two year in like yeah, it's pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, about a month. But uh, we talked about skateboarding, and we might do a follow up episode after I get more stuff figured out with this. But uh, Fantasmino had a version two of his board, mm. and what he does with his is he, it's about the same size, you know, generally a penny board. It's pretty small. Uh, he has three metal rods running down the middle, and uh, it seems to work pretty well. I haven't tried it because I don't plan to make one of his. I want to make my own. Uh, my idea is I want to make it really accessible. This is all printed on a replicator two. Uh, this is using APLA from 3D Fuel. Uh, we just had some some. I don't really want to say like the, some extra spool sitting around, something like a transition one here. So it's like use it or lose it, I guess. But uh, yeah, I wanted to do it without the metal rods. So I have pins in the middle here. I actually do have a lot of broken parts over here. So this is yeah. this, this is an unbroken tail. So if you can see here, the res it's a uh, kind of low contrast. Oh, I got I got John's shirt to. Well, I'm thinking just for the hole, but there is a hole here. Uh, that's how we connect these two. But uh, there are a bunch of issues with it, obviously. It creates pressure points. Underneath, I do have a channel where this uh, this piece sits inside. So it's actually two pieces. And then I don't know if I have any... Oh, there's some heft to this. I don't yeah. have... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's hard to take apart, so I didn't. But inside, there's something called a dovetail. It kind of looks like the Budweiser logo. And it just sits inside and holds the two pieces together. So I'm just trying to make it so this board's not going to pull itself apart. But it still wants to. I did get some footage at the skate park yesterday. Uh, there's a trailer on our face on our YouTube right now, and uh, there's gonna be a full video later on. And maybe we'll just have some clips kind of interspersed here. But uh, I have a few videos of me breaking earlier versions. This is actually version four. Uh, just slowly, pretty much just changing out this stuff. The front and back have not changed really at all. Uh, these have not really changed at all. The bottom part has changed considerably. The first few, I think I had. I'm trying to think. I have. And a you're whole, using. Inventor or...? I'm using Inventor. So this is what I did initially with just pins like that. But then I realized that uh, with the pegs and the pins going in the same direction, it would just pull itself apart. So I stood on it and it wouldn't even... I just called it the, the stand test or the, you know, just stand on it and kind of do a little wiggle. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it would just kind of pull apart. And another one I stepped on and it just broke all the way through here. At least this one held together a little bit so I could still skateboard after it broke. Uh, and then I started doing stuff that I wasn't, I was like, well, if it breaks, it's already broken. So actually I did, I broke this dropping in, but not on the drop in, just after I was trying to roll away. So I got the, I got I, the drop in, uh, I'll try to explain for people that don't know. So you have the half pipe or the quarter pipe, and then you go in, you know, you put your tail down mm -hmm. and go in. I also did a roll in, which just means you go off the edge and kind of land in the ramp. So uh, I'll probably just have little, little clips at this top <laughs> here. But yeah, it was, it's a challenging project. I'm very burned out on it. A lot of uh, staying here till four in the morning. Just because some of it, it's like I was actually trying to work on stuff. Some of it was just, I want to see the print done. Or for this one in particular, if you guys have ever done a filament change uh, to get a color thing like Midway. this, you have to know when to change it. Otherwise, you're not going to get the look that you want. So. And I think in some softwares, you can change it. I know, yeah. I know we just 
it's MakerBot, and I found out what percentage it was at, and then, yeah, there we go. It looked Is nice. It, can you do an S3D, I think? I think um, you can have it stop in different spots. You can have, <coughs> excuse me, oh, that's gonna be terrible. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Um, but yeah, I think in Simplify 3D, you can tell it, hey, stop at this point. Um, I think I, in I know, Kira I know as in well. Kira, yeah. Kira for sure you can tell it to stop at a certain point or stop at a certain yeah, layer. Yeah, so I, someone actually, if you go on our, uh, I think it's actually on my Thingiverse, I'm gonna bump my microphone. If you go on my Thingiverse, I think it's mine, it might be Fargo 3Ds. Mine is Super Juice on Thingiverse, just one word. It's uh, the buzzed bottle opener, I know, it's awful. Uh, uh, we made a bottle opener. And somebody in there said what layer to stop it at because they, they said, oh, I stopped at that layer, you drop in the penny, and then you just keep printing around it. So uh, there is a way to do that, and you know that's one user case, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I, I skateboarded on this. Uh, my friend Falcon got, and you know him as well. I yes. didn't know that. Uh, he's a f talented uh, videographer, photographer. He has a wide-angle lens, so he's the first person I thought of. Like I know he, I know he does this already, so I figured uh, I, I, uh, I do a little... I th I'm gonna 3D print something for him just as a, a gimme, and uh, he might have an edit as well. So uh, if we see that, I'll put it on the social media. Okay. So this will be something that we'll revisit later. I need to take a couple weeks off because it's just I'm very burned out. <laughs> so I'm thinking. I guess I'll just talk about what I plan to do in the future. So right now the pins are two inches long. I figure that if they're a little longer, it'll disperse the weight a little bit better. This one was pretty low infill. And I think that kind of helped to break it. Um, otherwise, I'm going to maybe try to get this sort of thing on the top as well. Because what I found is that when you stand on the front and back, it creates uh, a lot of flexing. And there's just no support up here at all, so I think that'll help a little bit. And uh, one embarrassing fact about the video that you'll probably see in the video, I don't know how the audio turned out because it was very windy. We did have my audio recorder, but uh, I forgot to put the pins in here because they were actually... They were, they were stuck in here, and this is really hard to get apart. If you look on our Instagram and our Facebook, there's a video of me pounding away at this. It was 10 minutes in real life, it's 30 seconds in the video. And the first time I did it, it took 30. So, oh, wow. someone said, oh, you make it look easy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I do. This is the fourth, fourth time. Probably, maybe, like, you know, well, I think in the thing is you're banging on yeah. the table, no, like the camera's the like ca shifting. So, so <laughs> I knew, I knew because I, you, could see, you could see, my, I put a little Patrick star uh, on the table, so you could see it bouncing around. I had to keep putting it back, and my mellow yellow falls off the table. Um, everything was off the table. If you notice that, everything was off the table for a reason, because I knew that was going to happen. And I knew the there was a, the thing the camera was on. I moved it away from the table because I figured if it was touching, it would be worse. And then I found out later. Oh, okay, it was just the floor. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was. Well, I, these these you really. These, you, well, you, I guess you, these 1950s kindergarten tables are, are, are kind of stiff, but... You have to really hit the thing to get... I mean, I, I could make the fit a little bit better, but I figure the strong fit, or the, the tight fit, will make it a little bit uh, more resilient. Maybe a little bit of, uh, of I figured uh, if, if I, or if I oiled it or something, like just throw some oil on it, it would probably slide in a little better, but you get to the point where um, I'm trying to get it in, and it's kind of pulling back and forth, so you have to hit one side, one side, and at some point, I'd start hitting the middle really hard because <laughs> I just got tired of it. Like, all right, enough's enough. Yeah, so um, I don't have a name for this yet. I'll try to think of something quirky and funny, but um, if anybody's really interested, I can put this on Thingiverse. Otherwise, I'm probably going to hold off until I have a more usable version. It doesn't skate like a skateboard. I guess I don't skate penny boards personally. I think they're kind of a joke, but I figured um, it's, it's hard to make these big because just so much weight is going to be pushing on the center. And I'm about 150 pounds, so I mean, I'm not that big of a guy, and it's not holding up all that well. So, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a work in progress. But I got a couple tricks, keep your eyes open for the video. Uh, I think I put out the trailer this morning, and maybe later this week we'll see the, the full one, so. Cool, yeah, no, I'm, ex I'm excited to see like what, like from your first design to your last design, what those two pictures kind yeah. of side by side I'm trying to think. Like. There aren't really any interesting, um, uh, nothing super interesting. I didn't have the channels at first, so then the part in the middle would just kind of pull out, and then it, you know, it just wasn't working that well. Sure. Um, and I was printing these. This is one interesting part, I guess, if you're a nerd. Um, these were printing horizontally before, and then I realized that the way that this part interacts, you get a lot of delamination, and it just ended up cracking on most of these. Uh, so I put the channel in, and I also printed it this way now, because then you get, you can, I think I did five shells, a lot of shells, so okay. you get that strength all the way around, and then it'll hold that part in the bottom better, and then it won't fall apart when I step on it, or crack. 
Well, whenever you step on it, you hear a lot of creaking, and it's really unsettling. <laughs> there was, uh, I, po I think I posted it uh, publicly because I wanted to make sure people saw it, uh, of me standing on version 3. Oh, And yeah. I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice I sound like an old man in, in the, the trailer. The things I say, I, I, I'm winded. I'm winded. I'm winded, and then... Uh, oh boy, <laughs> you're getting old. You're getting Golly. old, Baldy. I'm a I'm a ripe 27. Oh man, <laughs> I think you're the oldest one here, aren't you? Uh, well, except for oldest, Todd. oldest, well, oldest, uh, oldest under 40. He's probably winded. Oldest without children. <laughs> okay, there you go. There oldest you go. Without children. Yeah. So well, I mean, one I just made kids. myself sad. So uh, <laughs> I think if anybody has questions about this, feel free to reach out to us on social media. And if you have any helpful suggestions, because I've had some, and most of them aren't. They don't know about 3D printing and they don't know about design. That's another thing. I don't know CAD all that well, so I'm, I'm very good at extrusion. Are you, are you going to open the, the actual uh, solid model designs at the end, or...? Um, if people want them badly enough, I guess so. Um, I guess I'll just see what happens. I, sure. you know, I'm still considering my options. I'm not going to try to sell it or anything, so people are saying, you should make your company. Like, it's... It's just not. That'd be uh, a very expensive it's, it's, board. It's not economic. <laughs> like no. for, for how for how dense this is, it, it most most and of the this, amount of time it takes to print. Most of this is fifty percent infill. I'd say the print time overall yeah. is probably close to thirty hours, um, twenty five or thirty. So okay, I didn't I didn't show this yet. I've been pulling things out, but I have uh, <laughs> just got your whole bag of stuff over there. Oh man. Yeah. Oh good god. <laughs> so not all of these are broken, but some of them are just they don't work with the version that I have now because they're just not going to fit. So this is about four pounds, uh, close to two spools of filament. That which, just uh, work. That's not including the board. So I'm guessing it's probably two, and a, half spool, two and a half spools of filament. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, so it's, uh, I didn't expect it to be this hard, pretty much. <laughs> so hats off to Fantas Mino. He's uh, got a good board. I think his new one is called the 3DNA. Uh, penny board. It's uh, he has some partnership with a European company that does uh, some sort of composite materials. So check him out. Uh, he, I think he's in England. So okay. Well, I mean that's that project. And yeah. And yeah so I mean definitely going to be hearing more about that in the future. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing that we wanted to talk about is part of the reason that we haven't podcasted in a while. We've been busy just working on new products, trying to keep up with demand for the existing parts that we have. Um, you guys break your printers a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna come right out there and say it. I mean, there's there's how many thousands of Replicator 2s out there, and yeah, I mean, there's still great printers, but stuff definitely wears out. Um, so one of the products that we have had out of stock for a while that is now finally going to be back in we're stock pre soon. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah so we're, we got in, the first pre-order pre -order through. It's in pre-order right now. We've had over 20 pre-orders. I can't remember how big our production run is, but if you want this, it, so Y-axis secondaries, aluminum upgrades, if you want this, you better get to the website because otherwise you're gonna have to wait for the next production run. Um, and I'm not quite sure when that's gonna be. It just depends on demand. Yeah, and each, each one takes a decent amount of time. Yeah, so this is the, the case that the uh, the Y-axis <laughs> secondary upgrade comes in. So it comes in a nice 3D printed case. It's gonna look great against oh, yeah. the blue shirt. Yeah, so yellow is gonna probably show up <laughs> a little bit higher contrast. So the reason for this is to help eliminate a lot of the wear that that happens with the uh, the X-axis um, idler pulley wearing into the, uh, the plastic bracket. So what happens then is the belt seems to be loose, but it's actually the bracket that's wearing out. The aluminum one, you aren't gonna need to be replacing it. It's, if you buy a set of aluminum upgrades, they're good for basically for, for the life of that printer. As long and as you don't drop them don't or drop. Well, yeah, I mean, strip the, I mean, anything the, out. The, the, the basic, don't, yeah, I mean, don't intentionally break it. It should last the life of the printer. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it looks cool, anodized blue. Yep, anodized like, uh, blue. We've got some know, laser I don't know what you call that, it. it's like a, Whatever that it's blue color blue. is. It's a blue. Yeah, I don't know. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. Blue. Good one. So one of the other upgrades that will be coming out with soon is a dual uh, dual extruder mm -hmm. aluminum carriage upgrade. So we have the single carriage upgrade for the Replicator 2, but we've had a lot of people asking for that for the Replicator 2X and for a lot of the Replicator 2X and Replicator clones. Mm -hmm. uh, CTC 3D. We got some ceramic. Well, we got some ceramic tape for the CTC now. 
Yeah, yeah. So um, that's another thing is we're we're broadening out past just MakerBot parts. Mm -hmm. So the CTC uses very similar ceramic insulation tape to the Replicator 2, but the holes are slightly different. So now we've modified it, and we have a version specifically for CTC 3D printers. We're going to be adding more printers. Smart um, extruder ceramic insulation tape should be out sometime. Um, yep. I know you guys have asked a little bit about that, so we're working on a, on a solution for that. We're also working on different nozzle sizes for uh, for the Mark 8. Yep. And, for Mark 8 and nozzle different varieties. material types, too. Yeah. So we're not quite sure on the timeline for all of that, but that's just some of the stuff we have in the pipeline. Um, we've been very busy doing 3D printer repairs, too. We've expanded beyond MakerBot printers for that. So now, basically, any sort of MakerBot clone, we can uh, we can repair. Yeah, we and, can do uh, a lot of LulzBots bots. All stuff the LulzBots, well. bots, pretty much. Um, some, of those, some of those clones have really awful audio bites. Oh, it's terrible. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, um, the Mono Price, I, I Prusa uh, Three. Yep. Um, we can do a little bit a little bit of stuff on that, um, and then the Hatchbox um, Alpha those, Delta printer. That thing is huge. Thing That's has cool. a really, really tall build plate. Um, pretty wide too. I think it's ten inches off the top of my head. I, I can't really. Yeah, I think it's I bigger than remember. that. It might have been a twelve. No, 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 for diameter. Do oh, for I the cylinder think, build. I was thinking it might be bigger than ten, but I'd have to. I'd have to double check. It's very, very big. That. Um, and then there's uh, um, Robo 3D. We saw Robo 3D. Those, that's a, that's a nice looking machine. Yeah, it's actually interesting how it um, does the the build start. It goes and it senses, and it's got two micro switches on either side, oh. and then so it can actually sense either side. Um, one thing that just kind of a, a tip for if you're having issues with the high pressure threes um, or even the Robo 3Ds, um, make sure that your Z-axis um, screws. Um, if you're having trouble with a wonky build plate, make sure that the actual x-axis is parallel, or not parallel, yeah. The gantry, make sure that it's trammed to the build plate. Yeah. So, and we will be having a uh, upgrade um, piece for that to help with uh, with leveling your rods if uh, if you ever get to needing to do that. But just look out for that. Don't, you know, if you're frustrated with it, just check that, because that might be it. They, you know, just disable the steppers, turn them a little bit. Um, and then that should level it out. Um, otherwise, you can just grab a little level and put it on top too. Should make that into a 3D printer euphemism. <laughs> level your rods. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, ag and again, not necessarily leveling it. I mean, leveling it to the earth helps unless you're sitting on a table that's lopsided. Yeah, just make, sure, make, sure, the, yeah, make sure the build plate. Well, make, and I'm sure, make sure, uh, I'm sure for some yeah. of these repairs, that's what happened is someone put a level on it. And I've, if, it's, I've and seen if, that if they're in a crooked the floor, room the table, or something, anything. Yeah. If one of the feet's missing off the printer, just make mm -hmm. sure that to the build plate. Or nothing's under it either. To the build yes. plate or to the frame. Make sure that it's perpendicular or parallel, yeah. whichever it needs to be. So we've been very busy with repairs. It's very likely that in this next season, when you look at the workbench behind us, there's going to be a variety of printers. <laughs> I mean, we, it, it's... And we'll talk about some of them yeah. um, as we go. And if there's, if there's ones that you guys want us to talk about, you know, just general what we saw with it um you know just let us know and we can we can talk about them but yeah like john yeah. said there'll be a lot of different ones around we might actually i was hoping to have a, a an i3 sitting behind us but the last one i i fixed today was in pretty rough shape so oh, yeah I, I didn't really want that sitting back behind and there one of the other things that we're going to be adding is uh because we're doing a lot of these repairs we end up in situations where for example there's a bad motherboard well we don't want to just throw that away that's not really i don't know we're not electronics repair specialists. We're not. Uh, we're not going to sit there, solder the board, you know, fix anything that's that's Surface gone. Mounts there. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It's just outside of our wheelhouse. So we are starting up a junkyard section on our site, and we're going to start putting up spare parts that we just aren't going to be able to use anymore. Uh, printers that are maybe just bad. Bad motherboards yeah. is a really good one. Um, Rep twos, Rep two Xs. Um, you know, there might be one or two things uh, wrong with it. Um, that'll be up on the up on the site for you to purchase, and, and then you guys can troubleshoot and uh, kind of fix on your own own if you want to do that. Um, so yeah, you'll you'll see some of those yeah. things. Uh, and a lot of the stuff on the junkyard is going to be, I mean, we're pricing this stuff to move because <laughs> we don't want it taking up space here, and we don't want to fix it. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's what it comes down <laughs> yeah. to. So there's it's, a, it's a lot of it's a lot of money to fix it. Yeah. So if somebody wants to make a make a hobby out of fixing some of the boards, or they're just like, oh, I you know I I just want to have one on hand to go demo somewhere and show what it is. You, you could you could use it. For who's that. who's Watto and who's Anakin? <laughs> we haven't decided that yet. Uh, I think next, maybe, I think Todd, maybe Todd and Eric. Uh, little, Todd, little, Todd, little Eric can be Anakin. Todd and, Todd and I can be Watto because. 
You're the grumbly one? I am grumbly. Yeah. So the one of the other big things that we're going to have in the junkyard is um, out of spec spools of filament. So we work really closely with a 3D printer filament manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Um, they have spools, let's say, if they're starting up the line for the day and they're going from one color to another. For example, this piece right here in the board, Goes that's part of a... a fuchsia or magenta to a natural. Yeah, so there's a lot of transition spools or a spool that is maybe a little bit out of spec diameter-wise or the ovality is a little out. The thing with these spools are, um, even though it's out of spec diameter-wise, they have really tight tolerances. So out of spec for... Some of this stuff is actually better than a lot of the stuff you can find at retail. So even though it's out of spec, it's a really good deal. Yeah, um, so it might be... Some of it, some of it might just be a bad wine, too. Yeah. And some of it might be, you know, let's say it's 1.75, it might be 1.82, 1.83. Um, excuse me. Um, so it just might be that, just a little bit, like you said, just a little bit out of spec. Um, or yeah, the bad wines. Yeah, so generally speaking... Uh, and a lot of these, you're going to have inconsistent spool um, spool weights because whenever they find something that's out of spec, they stop the spool right away, take it off. So if there's a spool anywhere from 200 grams of material on it up to around 500 grams, you're looking at $10 for a spool. 500 grams all the way up to a full kg, you're looking at $15 for the spool. Um, ABS, PLA, APLA. So APLA, it's, a, it's an annealable PLA. So you put it in the oven after it's been printed at, what is it, like 200 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> for about half an hour to an hour. And then after that, it's like it's been heat treated. So it can withstand temperatures up to 141 degrees Celsius. I know I just did Celsius and Fahrenheit in the same <laughs> sentence, so I'm sorry for that. Yeah, um, that, That's what this was printed in, though, and, you know, I didn't really have any issues. I might have had one, and I think it was a printer. It was a, like it was getting caught oh. up in the, the drive gear or whatever it's called. Well, that's more of the yeah. printer problem. Yeah, so though. it was, I think it was the printer. I mean, uh, you might have hit one of those bad spots. Yeah. Um, so. And so, and when the diameter actually goes out, you can usually see it. Yeah. So I'm gonna use. It looks like uh, a, it looks uh, like a pea in a pod. Sure it it kind of looks like a little dimple or like a. Yeah. So I mean, if you like, if you like, look at my pen here, um, it might just be a little section, like an inch or something, or less than an inch. It right kind of looks it. like one of those weird whiteout pens that you squeeze. You know what, what I'm talking, talking about? about? No, nope. never mind. <laughs> I'm um, trying to it's just a little, it looks like. a little bit of the of the of the filament might be out of spec. So it's not the whole spool that's out of spec; it's just a little little portion right. of it. Um, because this stuff is, you know, it's out of spec material, and we don't always know what colors we're going to have. So it is it is a complete grab bag. Don't go into this expecting to get a certain color. Um, for example, if they did a production run of gray, we might have some gray spools. If there's if they just ha were having stuff from color transitions. Just don't have any expectations of what you're going to get, mm -hmm. um, except for the material. If it's APLA, we send you APLA. If you select PLA, that's what we send you. And, and the size that you request. Yeah, and the size that you <laughs> request. Yeah, that we'll make sure of that. Stuff. It's always important. <laughs> what does it say on the top of that little screen there? I don't know. I can't see that I can't far. Can't read that. All three of us with glasses. Oh, I'll just get up and look because you can cut this out. The junkyard. Um, you'll be you'll be able to find that by going to our website, going to. Uh, hit, um, in the menu, where do you, where do you think, go, John? <laughs> I think in the menu, you hover over shop, and then it'll be somewhere down there. I haven't put it in the navigation yet, so I'm not 100% uh. sure where it's going to end up. <laughs> um, yeah, but that, I think, is all of it from us for this week. Uh, I don't know when the next one's going to go up, but I think we're going to start building up some episodes and then releasing them once we've got a few recorded so that we can start having a more consistent release schedule. Um, once we know what that release schedule will be, we'll probably know it by episode three or four of this season. We'll get that all figured out. We'll let you know. Yeah, so and we, can, we are uh, very open to uh, uh, ideas for the for the show. If you yeah. have pe if people that are interesting or just topics that are interesting or if you think, hey, that, that was a really dumb background, you know, um, positive would be nice, but you know we'll take take what we get. Yeah, and discussion points. Generally, what we're trying to do is have three different things to discuss per episode. Have each episode be around half an hour long, so they aren't these marathon sessions of us just rambling and for the camera talking about stuff. I mean, that's not to yeah, say the right. rambling. To go. <laughs> that's not to say the rambling's going to go away, but. Um, I'm here yeah, to mitigate to make, the ramble. Yeah, try, so, so Jake, to Jake is, bit more. he's kind of the... I'm the moderator. Yeah, moderator. Well, kind of. Something like okay. that. Kind of. Anyway, on behalf of, of on behalf of all three of us, myself, John Schneider, Jake Clark, Eric Faldi, we want to thank you for watching this episode. Um, does that mean that it stopped? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just wrap it up. Okay, we're well, I'm just going to wrap this up. In that. The only thing that we're missing from this is... Like us and follow us on all of our social media channels. Otherwise, you get the basic gist. Again, on behalf of all of us, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's a camcorder legislation bullshit.
thing. It's, so, yeah, no, it's no, stupid. Don't. It's, it's like it's so, it, they don't. They don't want people. So they make it so it has to be professional if it records more than half an hour because they don't want anybody going to the movie theater and. It's like, you gotta make sure you sneak in something expensive yeah. to record the movie at the movie theater. So then when they sue you, they So actually... GoPro? Uh, yeah. 